Hi there, this is Mr. Alexander, and today I want to talk to you about graphing exponential and logarithmic functions. Uh, today is going to be a lot of calculator work, uh, so I've got my handy dandy calculator here. Uh, let's start with these notes that we went over in class. Log base 10 is used in so many real world applications that it's called the common log. When you push the log key on your calculator, which is right here, this is your log key right here. Uh, is actually finding log base 10. So if I wanted to get a table of these two things, this exponential function and this logarithmic function, 10 to the x and log base 10 x, I would go to y equals, and I would type in 10, I'm going to show you the whole calculator here, 10, and there's this caret right here, to the power of x. Now to get a table of values, you, you type a uh, second graph here. And we want from negative 3 to uh, positive 3. So negative 3 is 0 0.001, which is uh, also known as 1 over 1,000. Uh, negative 2 is 0 0.01, which is 1 over 100. And then negative 1 goes to 0 0.1. 0 is 1, 1 is 10, and 2 is 100, 3 is 1,000. So that's, uh, that's what my calculators told me here. To get log base 10 of x, I'm going to go back to y equals, and I'm going to do log of x. And the base 10 is implied because uh, whenever it's just log of something, it's implied log base 10. So if I go back to the table, uh, I can get some of these values. I can get the 1. I can scroll down and get the 10. So those were 0 and 1. But to get the other values, uh, there's a couple of different things you can do, but there's a little trick I like to use in the calculator. If you go second window and change the independent variable from auto to ask, when you go back to the graph, you just type in the x value you want. And I want 1 over 1,000, which is negative 3. And I also want 1 over 100, which is negative 2. And I want 1 over 10, which is negative 1. 100 is 2, and 1,000 is 3. So if you change it from auto to ask on the independent variable, it's going to spit out the numbers that you're looking for here. Now notice that 10 to the x power and log base 10 of x, they're the exact same table except inverted. And when that happens, you call these functions inverses. The log function and the exponential function are inverses when the bases are the same. Uh, so if I quickly graph these, I can graph a few values here. I can For the exponential function, I can grab 0, 1, and I can grab 1, 10. And I've got a lot of little values over here. What that means is this thing goes up forever, and it approaches the x-axis asymptotically. It gets closer and closer to that x-axis, but it never quite gets there. Uh, the log function is kind of similar. Instead of 0, 1, it's at 1, 0, which is right here, and 1, 10, which is right here. So it's going to go out to the right and up forever, but then it's going to approach the y-axis asymptotically. Now hopefully you remember that inverses, that happens, because they are reflections over this line y equals x. Um, so this is y equals log base 10 of x. This is y equals 10 to the power of x. And this point right here is 10 comma 1. This one is 1 comma 10. So they're inverses. Um, let's talk about the domain and range here. Just looking at the picture, remember domain is how far left, how far right. This exponential function, it obviously goes to the left forever. And it may not be clear, but it's going up and right to the ever, forever. It may go right really slowly, but it still does. So that's all real numbers, and there's a bunch of different ways to write all real numbers, but I like negative infinity to positive infinity. The range of this thing is how low to how high. This thing's going up forever, and it doesn't go down forever. It's approaching the x-axis but it never quite gets there. So the range is from 0 to positive infinity. 
The intercepts is right there. That's a y-intercept, and it's at 0, 1. And its asymptote is this line that it's approaching. It's approaching the x-axis, which we usually write as y equals 0. Um, the logarithm, these two things, the exponential and logarithmic function, are they are inverses. And things that are inverses have a relationship with the domain and range. The domain and range are the same, except you flip them. So the range here is the domain here. And you can see <clears throat> the domain of this guy is from 0 to infinity, because it gets really close to the y-axis, but never quite gets there. But it goes down and up forever. So the range is all real numbers, which I like to write this way. This thing doesn't have a y-axis, but or sorry, a y-intercept, but it does have an x-intercept at 1, 0. And it's asymptotically approaching the line x equals 0. So that's a really quick and dirty version of uh, the basic exponential and logarithmic functions. But I want to talk about a really specific one real quick of each. Just as pi is approximately 3.1415, so on and so forth, there's a special exponential it's called e. It's a special variable. It's not a variable. It's a number, 2.718. It's a uh, it's a very special number. It has a lot to do with exponentials. But what you need to know is that pi and e are both irrational numbers, which means they can't be reduced in decimal form, and they're just special functions. So let me show you how to type that in the calculator. Let's zoom in a little bit here. Uh, if you go to y equals, the e button is right here. It's second ln to get the e. And that's your x right there. And I'm looking for value of e at negative 3, at negative 2, negative 1, 0, oops, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. And so that's like 0 0.05, 0 0.135, 0 0.367, 1, 2.718, 7.39, 20.1. It's just a special function. We're going to talk about it a lot, this unit. For now, you just need to know e to the x is a special exponential function. This other one is said uh, g of x is the natural log of x. And you can get that by typing in natural log of x. And I'm going to turn this back to auto so that when I go to the table, so the natural log looks just like a regular logarithm. It's just a special logarithm. It's a logarithm of base e. Instead of base 10, it's base e. So another way to think about this is log base e of x, instead of like a 10 or a 4 or an 8 in there. Uh, so if I was to get some of these values, uh, 1, 0 is a good one. And then 2.73, uh, 1.09. Uh, but the point of all this is that they're inverses. And you can kind of see that in these two points right here. Like if I went to change this to ask, and I typed in 0 0.05, that's pretty close to negative 3. These guys are inverses. And their domain, the range, the intercepts, their asymptotes, they're exactly the same as what we did for regular logarithms and exponentials. So all this information is the same as what we did up front. Um, and their graphs will look like this. Let's go ahead and type in the graphs. So I want to do e to the x and natural log of x. And for fun, I'm just going to put in that line y equals x there so that you can see that these guys, that first one is e to the power of x. This is the natural log of x. And look, they're clearly reflections across the line y equals x. So these things are inverses. Little trick on the calculator. Calculator is only really good at doing two kinds of logarithms. It can do the natural log, which we've already done, and it can also do log base 10. 
But what if you didn't have log base 10 or log base e? What if you had something like log base 2? There's a little trick here. Uh, to get the calculator to spit that out for you, you would do log of 8 divided by log of 2. So you just divide by the base. So log base 10 of 8 divided by log base 10 of 2 will give you log base 2 of 8. All right, quickly now. Uh, if you're talking about the two parent functions here, let's talk about what each of these things do. That b in both those equations, that's your base. The a, changing that a, is either going to give it's going to give you a vertical stretch. And if that a is negative, that's going to cause a reflection across the x-axis. Uh, that the h is going to shift the graft left if it's positive and right if it's negative. And the k is going to shift it up and down. It's going to shift it up when it's positive and down when it's negative. So let's look at a couple of these. And this is what you really need for the homework here. So log base 2 uh, x plus 1. The parent function is a log. The base is 2. And before we do the domain and range, I'm going to talk about the transformations. That plus 1, that's going to shift it left one. Now, if we go back to the other side here, and we talk about the range of a logarithm, remember we filled this out over here, the range of a logarithm is all real numbers. Now there's not really anything you can do to a logarithm, no shifting you can do to change the range. So I'm going to go ahead and fill in that range as all real numbers. In fact, all of them that are logarithms here, I know for a fact that those, the range is never going to change. So I'm going to go ahead and copy those in before I even do anything. That's a natural log, but it's still a logarithm. So the ranges are done. The domain is what's going to change. When you shift this thing left one, previously it started at zero. This function, this logarithm function starts at zero. But if you shift it to the right one, or left one, or right two, or left two, that's going to shift the domain. So when you shift it left one, it's going to change the domain. Instead of starting at zero, it's going to start at negative one. Because uh, zero minus one is negative one. So now the domain goes from negative one to infinity. OK. Uh, let's take a couple more of these. Let's look at this natural log here. There's a few things going on here. First off, it's a log. That's the base. And it's base e. And what we've done here is three things. We reflected it. That's what the negative does. It's a vertical compression. And that plus 2 inside the parentheses, that shifts it left 2. So when you shift something left 2, it's going to change the domain. It started at 0, now it's going to start at negative 2 and go to infinity. All right, let's do, uh, let's do one of these exponentials here. Let's do the exponential right here. Obviously, the base is an exponential with base e. And it has reflected. And it has vertical shift. The range is always all real numbers, and the domain is always all real numbers. And in this case, the range, we haven't shifted it up and down, so the range is going to change. So the range is from 0 to infinity. And that's just a bare bones explanation of some of these exponentials and logarithms. I hope it's a good start, and thank you for watching.